Hi, welcome to Aviation Night by Aviation Zero. I'm delighted to be chatting with founder of Heating Mitts, Intentional Boxing Training, Cleveland Hughes. A very good day to you, Cleveland. How are you getting on? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. No, my pleasure. So yeah, we always start this off. Um, for some reason, the listeners like to know where everybody is from or the guests are from. So I've seen where you are at this present moment of time. So you can't really spruce it up to make it more Hollywood. But where are you right now on the planet? I'm in Chicago, Illinois. And how is everything in Chicago, Illinois? Uh, I mean, it's it's calm. It's, uh, it's a little chilly, but... Uh, it seems to be the energy is pretty good here today. So things are going well. Wonderful. So we just crack on. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about your background? Well, um, well, I'm, I'm a full-time boxing coach. Uh, I started boxing back uh, uh, 2009. So I've been doing it about 11 years. Uh, I, I run the Healing Mitts Intentional Boxing Training Program, the thing I created uh, up in my gym, uh, one city away from here. And I also muscle the head coach at, the Mayweather Boxing and Fitness Gym here in Chicago River North. Um, and that's my professional background. I'm sure we'll get deeper into more yeah. later on. Yep. All the nitty gritty. So so why did then why did you take up boxing? I mean, what was it about boxing that really attracted you to it? Was it, it wasn't because you watched a Rocky movie, was it? No, it definitely wasn't because I watched Rocky, because Rocky that that looked really dangerous what they, right. those guys were doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, even though it was just acting. But no, uh, you know, I started boxing as a personal development journey i wasn't doing so good as a you know and in, in my life i didn't feel i didn't feel the way that i thought i should feel and i decided that you know i went to therapy i went to i started going to seeing a therapist and you know i definitely wanted to play sports and i wanted to be in the sports arena but i didn't really know what sport that was going to be because i was kind of small for um like you know basketball or american football um, you know, so I was kind of feeling lost and I started going to therapy and uh, my therapist knew I wanted to do sports and they suggested that I, you know, I try boxing. And from, from that moment of going to the boxing gym, I had realized that this was much more than just uh, an athletic pursuit. It was what happened to my mind is what really attracted me to the sport and what kept me uh, doing the sport, which is keeping me doing it now. Cleveland, I mean, did your therapist actually like you? to recommend boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, I want this kid to get hit in the face. Um, I think, I think, um, I think the, my therapist noticed the desire to compete in me. He, he recognized that, that there was, there was a fire inside of me that, that I needed to tap into. And uh, he made that suggestion and it was uh, completely life changing. So I hope he liked me. That's him. Um, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. <laughs> but so, he definitely did get me hit in the face a lot. So, <laughs> Did he say, like, you're going to get hit in the face anyway through life, so you might as well get used to it? That's what I was told, he, because, because I he, have a face he, for radio. I don't have a face for TV. So they, they, they got told it. me you're better off staying behind it, so it's uh, to get used to it. So what about, what about the mental health part of it? I mean, how, how can boxing help someone's mental health? So when your therapist actually said, you know, try out boxing, I mean, how, how does it help? Well, you know, I don't think my therapist knew exactly um, what I was going to what I was going to gain from it. He was just trying to give me some sort of outlet. But I learned very early on, you know, like like sports, like you know, football, American football, and basketball, and soccer, and all those different. Uh, I'm sorry, you would call it football, probably. Uh, no football. worries. Your, your, apologies, your apologies accepted. Go ahead. <laughs> I know you guys made the original. It's original. But uh, no, it, those sports were more so like, you know, who can run the fastest, who can jump the highest and who can, you know, you know, who can perform better. And in boxing, it was more so about who could control their fear and their anxiety. Because uh, boxing, the, the fight isn't between you and the other guy. It's between you and you, you know. Um, it's really hard to go into a situation where you could potentially get hurt. I mean, the goal of the sport is to go and hit the other guy as hard as you can, yeah. you know, and try to and try to knock him out. And for a competitor in that sport, you really just have to, you have to learn to control your anxiety and your emotion. You can't get emotional in that ring. And, and that was the, that's, that's the thing that I learned through boxing is I developed a, a boxer's mindset, the, the controlling of uh, the mind. And I mean, do you have to, I mean, probably listeners are probably wondering, especially from the aviation side, they're probably thinking, you know, what, what's this guy doing in aviation zero trying to get me into boxing? But obviously you can get fit without the physical 
hitting somebody else. Is that correct? You can actually punch like a bag. You can do different type of exercises. Yes, and that's why that's why it's called that's why I call it intentional boxing training because I don't think it's a good idea for you know most people to get into the competition side of boxing. You know, getting hit in the head is not good for you, but all the things before that are are where the magic lies in boxing training the hitting the bag you know the the mitt work you know the jumping rope the shadow boxing all the different aspects of the sport uh can get you get you in an extremely good shape um but also if you can like but if you use the system that i created it was designed for people that were doing it because they had some sort of mental strain that they were going through you know People would come to me and say, I just really just need to hit something. And I would, tell, I would say, why? Oh, because I'm going through a divorce. Okay, that makes sense. You know, and, and, and you know, different, those, different, those different kinds of scenarios where people were coming to me too. And I was like, well, people aren't really doing this just to be fit. So let's, let me create a program that's focused on what these people are coming here for. And it's really some, it's like, a, it's like therapy. It's meditation. It's, it's all those things. And how hard do you have to train? There's a photograph of you, the listeners, they'll, they'll see it when the podcast comes out, like, you know, and uh, is it true before we move on? I mean, did you model yourself on my physique? Was I your inspiration? Absolutely. That's, that's all I want to hear. That's, that's very, <laughs> very, very, very positive. But I mean, how hard do you have to train? I mean, we see these Rocky movies, Cleveland. And, I mean, I'm a big Rocky movie fan and Creed fan. I, lo- I love those movies. They're very inspirational. Yeah. They get you up off your backside. You want to go run on a beach uh, with Apollo. And, uh, and and Rocky and you even love the Russian in, in Rocky Four, like you know, it's it's that type yeah. of movie where you see the physique, you see how fit they get, you see the training they go on, they do skipping, uh, they do all these very high intensity training routines. I mean, is it like that continuously? Uh, yeah, um, yes, it is. The thing is, is I always tell people this: is when you sign up to do boxing, right? If you're going to do it competitively, you're going to sign up for two sports. Uh, one boxing to running. Uh, There's a lot of running involved in conditioning for boxing. So you typically, so I typically train uh, boxing three or four times a week. And then I run three or four times a week. So sometimes I'll run twice. I work out twice a day. And sometimes I, you know, work out once a day. Um, But like I said, it's, it's usually about seven to eight hours a week of training to maintain that the physique, the physical part of uh, boxing training, but for anybody that's just trying to get in shape and you know just take care, better care of themselves, and get those um, you know mental health benefits, you know two or two or three times a week, two or three hours a week is enough to just uh, to get those benefits. What about the diet then? I mean, do you need to be watching what you're eating as well? Do you have to take like you know supplements or protein shakes or all this type of stuff, or is it generally you know focus on the physical side of it, the, the fitness side of it, and then the rest should fall into place? Well, I mean. You can, it, it, you know, it, that's a good question. And it all depends on what the lifestyle of the person is that is doing the boxing training. You know, if, you know, if you've got a 180 pound frame, like if it's normal for your, somebody your size to be 180 pounds yeah. and you've got a 250 pound lifestyle, you know, boxing training isn't going to make you 180 pounds. It's just not, it's just not going to do it. And, I, and I'm saying this in, and the way Americans would say it, because we, uh, we have a different uh, system, I think. Do you guys use stones? Oh, we use kilos and stones, depending on what time of the week it is. But you go ahead. We, yeah. we, can, we can convert it anyway. No problems. Yeah, okay. Just so, so people understand what I'm saying. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm describing like a six-foot-tall person. Uh, and that's also another metric that you don't use. But that's fine. We'll just move on. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is, is that if you, if you want to be lean, mean, fighting machine – you know, you have to adjust your lifestyle accordingly. But I think that what ends up happening is, is you want to you wanna maximize what you're doing in the gym. And ultimately, that affects the decisions you make outside of it. And, you know, you start to eat better, um, sleep better, and take better care of yourself over time. But, yeah, you, you do want to eat well when you're doing something like this. I mean, but everybody should want to eat well just for their own, their own health. Is boxing then, I mean, you, you briefly touched on it there, but, I mean, is boxing suitable for everyone? especially those that might have like slight conditions per se. I, is, it, is it possible that anybody can get involved? I, I sincerely do think that most people can. I have seen so many different kinds of disabilities be able to participate in the sport of boxing. 
Um, and the coolest thing about boxing is the training itself, you know, if you take out the running, is very, very low impact. And I, it might sound counterintuitive, but it really is. It really is low impact. There's a lot of people that um, – that were previous runners and they, you know, they got a knee injury or previous football uh, footballers and they, you know, they got a knee injury or something like that. And they, they can't, they can't put all that stress on their body. They, they switch to boxing training because they need that same level of intensity, but they want to get there without having to run. And uh, boxing is the way to do it. So, but yeah, so I think that it's, it's good for a lot of people. I think most can do it. Where, where, where is, I mean, just for my own sake as well, I mean, for my own information, where, where's the most, how would you say? You ever see the go? Oh, no, I keep going back to the Rocky movies. I'm sorry, but when uh, uh, a boxer strike another boxer, where is the most high impact area of the body? Obviously, we're not telling anybody to do this at home, but where is the most high impact to cause the most problems for the other person getting the punch? When when boxing training or in boxing competition? Because it's, it's okay. Well, you can tell you tell me both. Yeah, I'm very interested in both. Well, I mean, I well. Well, it, it's more than obvious that uh, the biggest part of impact in competition is on the head, you know, and that's definitely not good for you on the head and neck area. But in training, when you're, you know, like working, you know, hitting the bag and hitting the mitts, I think the biggest part of the, the hardest impact is on the, the, the shoulders, the elbow and the wrist, especially um, in the beginning when you're learning how to throw techniques, because what you end up finding out is that when your techniques improves, you um, the the impact it will be absorbed by the entire body and not just those those first few joints that I uh, mentioned. But in the beginning, yeah, it's the the it's the the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder joint. Sometimes the neck as well. Who is and this would be interested for me? I mean, who is your boxing hero? Um, is do you have one favorite or is there a few? Well, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to be a boxer from this generation and not be influenced by Floyd Mayweather. Right. Yeah, I've got a whole in my apartment. I've got a whole wall of you know Mayweather uh, posters of his fights. Oh wow! Okay. And, yeah, uh, and he's and he's not the only boxer hung in my apartment. There's there's a bunch, but um, Mayweather for sure, just because his his IQ, you know, he what he did inside the ring and how he did it to me is was very masterful. His whole career was masterful and and. You know, I just want to have the same. I want to have is I want to have success. Obviously, I probably won't reach the heights of Floyd Mayweather, but you know, I also want to have that kind of. I want to have a high level of success. So that's one of the, my my heroes. Have you met him? No, actually, I have not met him. Um, technically, work at one of his gyms. So at well, some he, point, he'll pop in eventually. He's gonna, eventually, he's going to pop in. He probably would have been here by now if it wasn't for uh, COVID nineteen. But. Um, Hopefully in the near future we'll get to I'll get I'll get to meet my idol soon. What what about Mr. Tyson? I like I like Mike Tyson. I like Mike Tyson a lot. Um Mike Tyson has gone through a bunch of different phases in his uh his career and now he's a businessman, you know, course, and yeah. it's like he, Yeah, he made you know he made like uh close to 500 uh million US dollars in his boxing career and by the end of it he was broke and oh, wow. now he's basically yeah, now he's made all of his money back, and you know, and and you know, in the industry that he's in now, and it, it it's amazing to watch Mike Tyson's um, transformation from when who he was when he was a, a young man to who he is now, and he it, it's Mike Tyson is in, in, in total inspiration. I've got posters of him in my apartment as well. He he used to. I remember watching the the, the fights. I mean, he used to have the most I would say the most amazing neck I've ever seen. I mean, it just it just had power. Between yeah, and the rest of his body, his neck was just like whoa. It was just—is that normal for boxers? Is it to have kind of like a, a very wide, strong neck? Is that normal? Uh, you know, Mike Tyson was abnormally had an abnormal frame for a heavyweight because he was a little bit shorter but real thick and strong. Mike Tyson was built like a like a a National Football League um, halfback, like a you know what I mean, like. Uh, but yeah, no, the guy, his physique was just phenomenal. He's, he, yeah, I don't, I don't think there was anybody that as strong as Tyson was physically for his frame. He was just so strong. And out of the three of them, and I'll put you on the spot here because I'm very interested in this, uh, Mr. Floyd uh, Mayweather, Mr. Tyson, uh -huh. or Mr. Muhammad Ali, who do you think out of the three would, would kick each other's butt? If if we could make fantasy matchups and we could change the weight classes because the only two that could fight each other in that would be Tyson and Ali because uh, 
Mayweather was a uh, 147 pound and the other two guys were heavyweights. Um, I think uh, when it comes to skill set, man, uh, it's kind of hard to overlook Mayweather's uh, skill set. You know, uh, those other guys were really great and they yeah. paved the way for Floyd. But the, the advantage that Floyd had that they didn't is he got to watch those two guys before he, you know, uh, before he got, you know, and while he was, you know, getting started. It's amazing listening to you there talking because uh, even my, my, my father is a big fan of boxing and growing up. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm absolutely awful at it, but I love watching it. Um, amazing how how fit these these uh, athletes are. So, can you explain more? What what is healing mitts? Okay, so healing mitts, like I, uh, I I said a little bit earlier, I said I created a system for people that were looking to get those therapeutic benefits. I started asking my clients. Uh, probably about a year and a half or so, year and a half ago or so, uh, why do you box? And they were telling me all of these things that had nothing to do with just being physically fit. It was all these stressors, anxiety, depression, uh, alcoholism, that, that kind of different, those different things. And I was like, okay, well, I asked myself, well, what is so therapeutic about boxing? besides the benefits of exercise. And what I found was, is that there were four things um, that if you could practice and they're like, they're, they're basically, um, they're, they're basically things, mental exercises that you do while boxing. I came up with these four different things and they're basically tools that you can use inside the gym while you're practicing and then outside the gym as well. And can you go into more depth about those four tools? Sure. The first principle is what I call the art of relaxed intensity. And basically, I learned, you know, and obviously these, all these lessons came to me from just boxing training. I remember I would get in the ring and uh, if ever I was tense, like I, if I wasn't relaxed enough, everything would be really slow. I would go, I'd be really slow. And I was actually, I'm a, I'm a lightweight boxer. So I'm supposed to be fast and I am pretty fast uh, when it comes to boxing, but I would get slow and I would get tight and I would get, um, uh, what's the word? I would just get tight. I wouldn't be able to move with that flow. And so I, it's something that I help my clients and basically I help my clients relax and get to a point where they're working from a state of fluidity and, um, you know, looseness, uh, more like a yoga kind of thing than a weightlifting kind of thing, you know, less, more relaxation than tension. So that was the first principle. And the way that I feel like translates to everyday life is that you need to, you need to be relaxed, but also ready to, you know, spring into action if in case something may happen, you know? And so that was the first principle. <laughs> so then the sec the second is uh, what I call active concentration. It's about using your, your concentration versus using your instincts. And I think about it from a re a reaction versus response standpoint. Uh, in boxing, you need to make the right moves at the right time. And if you are, acting completely off of your instincts, you're not going to make those right moves. You're going to, for the most part, the chances of you making the right moves are going to decrease a lot um, if you're not acting from your training. I teach my clients the appropriate responses to certain things that happen in the ring. And the way I feel that translates to everyday life is imagine you're in a meeting and somebody says something that you don't like and your instinct is to re is to react and you know say something abrasive to try to uh to to get back at them because yeah. they said something you didn't like now it's your turn to say something you didn't like but that's not strategic you're in a meeting for for a purpose right yeah and so what you what you need to do is internalize what's happening and come up with an appropriate response it's all about winning the way i see it right um yeah. If you if you just react and go off the handle, you lost. You absolutely yeah. lost. Um, and we want to win in such in situations in life. And so active concentration is that principle of staying in control and going back to your training and making sure that you win and that you don't uh, end up breaking something uh, along the way, like maybe a relationship or something of the sorts. So pretty much bite your lip. <laughs> yeah yeah basically and there's a lot of, there's a lot of that in boxing you know you get hit and you need to bite down on your mouthpiece and say okay i need to not react and yeah. try to just fight this guy i need to go back you know what i mean go back and see what just happened process it make the adjustments and then and then attack accordingly you know that's how it works in boxing 
Yeah. Number three is uh is what I call champion's breath. And this is the one I'm interested in. I, I'm, I'm, uh, this yeah, go ahead. This one is really this one I really believe is the backbone to what I'm what what I'm teaching here, and I think is the most effective principle. Obviously, all together, these things are powerful, extremely powerful things uh, for your life. But champion's breath is about controlling your breath, and what ends up happening. Uh, in our lives is we get disconnected from our breathing and we don't breathe correctly. We don't breathe properly. And that causes us all kinds of issues, anxiety, all kinds of things. But what I've learned is if you want to relax and be alert in, in a stressful situation, you can't allow your nervous system, like your fight or flight part of your nervous system to take over. Because if it does, then you're going to be acting completely just outside of, you know, normal, what would you would do normally, like from a cognitive standpoint, you know, when you're stressed out, you don't make good decisions. That's yeah. is what I is what I've noticed for, for myself. And so champion's breath is controlling your breath at a breath rate, um, six times per minute, which is basically 10 second breaths. And Basically, when you get to a breath rate of six breaths per minute, right? Uh, what happens is, is your nervous system relaxes and you, you wake up, your body wakes up. You become extremely alert and in control and focused. It changes the way your brain processes things when you breathe at a certain breath rate. And I noticed that whenever I was in the ring and I took my time and I took deep breaths, uh, I was extremely, I was a lot more successful and for people in life, in everyday life, I, I believe it's the same thing is if you are getting anxious or if you're getting stressed out or if something is, you know, making it hard for you to, to stay focused, deep breaths, deep breaths are going to be the thing to help bring you back to um, a, a cognitive standpoint where you can make good decisions. That's brilliant. I mean, I think it's, it's what you said is correct. It's, um, you know, we do have, especially nowadays, everybody's quite stressed there's lots of job losses there's people are just angry generally in the world and i think um if you just breathe six times in one minute it'll help a lot agreed agreed and and you know basically and it's so all like that that's number three so number four is what i call technical focus and this is the boxing part now for the most part when you go to a boxing gym a traditional boxing gym and someone's teaching you how to box this is the part that you'll get at mostly every gym technical focus. They want you to focus on your technique. But I've taken it one step further. And through the the four principles, right, if you're going to do all of these things all at once. So when you get to number four, you're doing everything I said previously. You're breathing, you know, you're taking those deep breaths, you know, um, you're relaxed, you know, you're focused. And now you're going to do all the direct technical cues for boxing, turning your hands over, having your feet in the right position, turning your body and, you know, immersing yourself in the process of throwing punches. And so what I, what I find that the major benefit to te technical focus is if you're doing all the things that I'm asking you to do, it's quite hard, I would say close to impossible for you to think about anything else. And what causes us a lot of mental stress in this, in this day and age is thinking about uh, what, what could be, ha what could happen next, what happened in the past, you know, what happened last week or, you know, anything that any tr trauma or anything that you had gone through, we just fo we're focused on that. We're thinking about something that isn't in front of us right now. And it causes us, you know, causes us mental stress. And what I hope for people is, is that they learn to, you know, feel the feet under, you know, feel the, feel the ground underneath their feet and feel the, the air in their lungs and be in the moment and just let it go. And what ends up happening is when we get into the moment and our nervous, nervous system relax, we actually begin to heal. You know, we, we get into a point where oxygen can go to our blood and like we can digest our food and we can do all these things that we need to do in order to, you know, continue to keep going forward in life. And so, yeah, those are the, those are the four pr principles. You know, this, this is my philosophy on, um, you know, boxing can help you be a better person in life and that's, it helped me. So um, that's why I created a system, trademarked it, patented all that, all those things. So I can teach it to other people and hopefully that they can see those benefits as well in their lives.
Oh, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, I just, I just I reviewed them again just for the listeners. Say, number one is art of relaxed intensity. Number two is active concentration. Number three is champion spread. And number four is technical focus. So can I ask then, even are these four uh, techniques, are they on your on your website? Can people actually download them to see them? To actually yes, them? yes, you can, you can go, on. you can, yeah, you can go to my website and download. I have a booklet about that has a breakdown of all the four principles and how I use them uh, for my clients. And conceptually, you know, if you understand the concepts, you can use them, you can apply them at any point. So yeah, if you go over to healingmits.org, you can download the booklet from there. Yeah. Um, and where else are you on social media? Strutting your I'm at, I'm at clevelandh.fitness it's on Instagram. I don't really use much other platforms other than Instagram for the most part. But yeah, so yeah, clevelandh.fitness, go on Instagram, go follow me and uh, send me a message if you want to talk more. I, I'd be way more than happy to have a conversation with you about, you know, whatever's going on in your life. And maybe I can uh, help you through those four principles. Um, get, get yourself feeling a little bit better and feeling a little bit more motivated to go after whatever it is that you want to do. And are you doing these sessions online as well? Uh, virtually? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. I'm doing, I do them virtually. I do them in person, uh, which is a lot less nowadays just because of, you know, the virus and such, but um, yeah, we can, I can get you on a video call and, I can show you how to throw some punches. I can teach you about the principles. We can do some breath work. And um, yeah, and you could be feeling pretty awesome within an hour. Can you give us, Cleveland, your best Yo Adrian from the Rocky movie? Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Come uh, on. You can do uh, it. <laughs> you know, the best one, you know, the, the Yo Adrian thing, I never really got into it, but I just thought it was really great when Rocky won <laughs> – won the uh the championship and he's like Adrian <laughs> he's like Adrian it's like dude you like you got hit in the face man like you he sound he sounded drunk you know <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that was a better that was, Adrian than I was than I was expecting well, 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 well. I, I do all things with emotion so I had to I had to go there. <laughs> so Hollywood Hollywood is calling very soon. <laughs> Tell me Stephen so what do you recommend so aviation professionals now obviously this is what we're trying to do in Aviation Zorro is to connect aviation professionals who, you know, they want to look after their mental health. They want to look after a little bit more of their, uh, their fitness and their health. What, what can you recommend to them to get involved uh, in boxing, to have more fun and relax and obviously get in touch with you? What can you recommend for them? Inspire them now, Cleveland. Here's your moment. Inspire them to get in touch. The thing is, is you just have to recognize, I mean, in, in what you do, you know, is a very important and a stressful thing. And what's really important for you to perform at the highest level continuously is that you continue to invest in yourself. Learning a new skill like boxing and, you know, especially doing it in a way that you want to feel mentally stronger. The only thing that you really have to do is get started. Be an expert at showing up. Everything else, you know, um, will also show up and then dedicate yourself to the process. This thing can really, really help you. Just, just take your time and, and stay focused and deep breaths. And all the things that you, that you want to do, you can do. And you, as you know, you already know that. You've already accomplished so much in your life. Uh, why can't you just be healthy and, and mentally clear and, 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 you know, perform at the highest level? You can do it. You know you can do it. Um, you just got to get started. If you want, call me first, you know, uh, go to my website. I'll, 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 get, you, I'll get you started. That's, that's, that's it. He's re raring to go, guys. Get on the phone and... And get on the, the website and uh, Cleveland will sort you. Can we just have, can bring just one, one little thing back there, Cleveland? You mentioned there with regards to invest in yourself. That's one thing that uh, we hear a lot. Well, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that, invest in yourself? Do you mean like be, be a little bit more selfish or kind of like have goals? Is that, is that yes, I, I do. I mean that. I mean, I mean, I do mean be selfish. Absolutely. And I think that the biggest problem uh, that people have in their lives is, is they, they want to please everyone. And I say it like this from this perspective of having an empty cup, having a full cup. You can't help anybody yeah. if your cup is empty. Like you have nothing to give. The best, the best thing you could do is invest in yourself. And when and I invest in myself, I spend money uh, on myself to, to go to trainings 
to, you know, to get coaching, to do, you know, breath work classes. I, I invest a lot of time in being the best I can be because in that way, in that regard, when I'm at my best, then I can give people my best. And when I give people my best, I make a huge impact on them. And so let's, let's be serial investors in ourselves. Invest heavily in who you are in developing yourself. As, as Cleveland has mentioned there earlier on, I just want to clarify, uh, when we talk about eye candy, when you see Cleveland's photograph again, he did model his physique on me. Just so you know, uh, no airbrushing, <laughs> no Photoshop, that physique was modeled on me. So I just, I just want to say, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining me today on Aviation by Aviation Zero. And as Cleveland mentioned, you can uh, check out his website, uh, healingmyth.org. Dot .org, just making sure. Healingmyth.org, uh, intentional boxing training, Cleveland Hughes. Thank you so much for joining me today. All right, thank you.